here at 327 okay um, I just wanted to uh, share with you this little problem I had I had my tie rod come apart um, the other day and I was uh, I had fortunately said Psalm 91 on the way to work and I uh, somehow miraculously did not injure anyone else or kill myself um, so uh, I just wanted to uh, show you that if you have a repair like this I wanted to give you the basics of how to go about changing it out okay I've got a few tools right there we'll see what we need this you can see is where it came apart <laughs> um, so let's let's get that pulled out of there and let's get get down to it one of my tricks here is um, if you don't have enough ump to, uh, to undo these bolts right here you can just put this little extension on here and this is just a piece of uh, inch and a quarter EMT pipe and if you come over here it makes it really of course you got to have something to, to anchor it to so <laughs> but anyway you can uh, all right we got right there it stopped and it'll see how easy that just comes apart right there so that's one thing you can do to help yourself out now some places don't recommend you use that because it can be potentially dangerous so I'm going to say you work at your own risk And I'm going to do a little overview before I really get into this a little too much here. We're going to change out those ball joints. Just get in here and just look and see how everything looks down here. See that? How that goes across like that. I need to take that apart. Anyway, that's, that's how it's looking. Look at the other side. Gives us a good overview. Okay, guys, there's no, I don't have to take this apart. I do have to take this off, and I do have to take this off. And the reason for that is I bought a new uh, drag leak assembly, or whatever it's called. So we're just going to pop this loose, and we'll pop this one loose. And I should be able to take it off, sit it on a bench, and kind of line it up and make sure it's all the same size. All right, I uh, straightened out the steering wheel where this uh, this wheel or this rotor is straight, and I wanted to look at this uh, pitman arm. And I wanted to make sure that when I put it all back together, I don't have this all, you know, cattywampered or whatever, and you know, I think I'm straight or whatever. So, anyway, this this looks like it just goes pretty much straight back, maybe a little bit of an angle, but I wanted to make a note of that, and because when you take all this apart you forget so take pictures take video so that's what we're doing I don't have anybody to hold the camera for me but you can look and see how that tool goes in there and you just tighten this up and that'll pop that loose and that'll pop that one loose so let's um, let's get them get them loose we got that one popped out of there um, this uh, head on this started to mushroom and it started to walk around in there so I had to make some special modifications myself and I ground off that mushroom head and I uh, kind of drilled that out so it would give it a little pocket to set in. So let's see if we can get this off right here. This is the one that's really difficult to get off right here so far off of that arm. And I'm going to see if I can hold the camera with my mouth and see if we can get this popped off on camera. I'm not making any guarantees. Alright, we got a piece of split oak in there, and I'm going to have to use this 
because this is very difficult to turn at this point. Alright, well that one was by far the most difficult one to get out of there. So uh, I took a piece of split oak wedge and it took that <laughs> that extension rod right there to to get that out of there. So alright, well let's uh, let's pull that thing out and let's get it rebuilt. Alright, well everything has been uh, 19 millimeters so far and same thing right there. So let's uh, Let's see if we can get these out. Ah, I need both hands. Now you have to put a wrench on the back side. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, let's get that last bolt out. that assembly is ready to come out of there. There we go. All I need to do is fish it out and take it out all in one piece. Alright, I think we can pull this out. Oh, I spoke too soon. the bad boy right there all laid out so let's get the new parts and see if we can uh, pretty much approximate or get close to what I got here and put that thing back in well these are the parts so let's uh, take those out and let's get them laid out all right well if I can show this to you on camera this is right hand threads right here this screws in like it's supposed to. This end is left hand thread so you have to turn it counter counterclockwise to tighten it up and oh don't make the mistake I did you need to put these on you know before you put all that together so don't forget. But anyway this one I've laid it out as close as I can the thread pattern to this one. Um, now the kit did not come with these I had to buy those from AutoZone. Um, I could have reused these, but to match everything up, I went ahead and just bought the extra little uh, tie rod adjusting sleeves right here so that I can get pretty close to where it is. So, all right, well, let's, uh, let's finish that up here. But I just wanted to share that little tip with you. <laughs> these are right-hand threads. These are left-hand threads. Something else I wanted to share is that this, um, I was able... I had this rod over here on that side and I wasn't able to adjust it like that one and this one more fit this side so I had to put it over here and that one that I had started on this side more fits this side so I just thought uh, that might help you out because what it would do is it would bottom out there in the sleeve it's almost bottomed out right there so anyway I just thought I'd uh, share that with you too. Alright I got this all put together and uh, like I said, guys, if you can, um, you know, get all the parts and then, you know, kind of um, approximate or very close figure out, you know, the threads that are sticking out and the length of the thing, I think you're going to be a lot better off than taking those off and then trying to match it back up over here. That, uh, that might prove difficult. But I've got everything just finger tighted on here. I didn't want to bear down on it till it gets installed because there'll be something off and then I'll have to use that tool and probably pop it back out of there but uh, this old piece has over 200,000 miles on it so if we get uh, another 100, 200 out of this I'll, I'll be happy. Okay I just wanted to make a simple point here we know that when we look at a bolt like that that it's going to spin counterclockwise to get it off but when we have a bolt like this that's upside down sometimes it's a little confusing but what we can do is we can put our ratchet you know we can see that our ratchet 
is spinning counterclockwise and that's going to take it off so you can do that and then leave it set and then put it up under there and it can be a lot less confusing so anyway just a simple tip I thought I'd, I'd share that Okay, in case any of y'all are wondering, this is the uh, the blue wrench. Trying to loosen that up a little bit. All right, guys. I just want to say it's very important to have that that nut on there when this thing breaks loose because it could fall on you. So anyway, that little pickle fork did its job. Let's see if we can get that ball joint out of there. This one, when I unbolted it, it just just fell right out. All right, as difficult as it was to get this off of there, there is a little ring right here, and we need to pry that off somehow and get that out of there, or otherwise you're not going to get this ball joint out. So let me uh, my camera girl taking somebody to the doctor today. I can't. All right, I'm gonna need both hands. All right, I just pried that up with uh, a screwdriver. Should, oh, it wants to go back on there. There we go. It just pops right off. Anyway, if you don't, take that off you're going to have a devil of a time you're going to bend something up trying to get that out of there so all right the um, the little bottom of the tool right here is is too big I had to use this flat piece of metal in here and this wants to slip off of here but uh, I'm just going to have to work it and get it off all right, I think we we got it by the testicles now. All right, I think we got it by the testes now. So, oh, there we go. I was able to get that on camera. Cool. All right, well there we go. All right, I think that got it. I uh, made a mistake and I was able to recover from it. But this uh, looks like the proper way to do it right here, and you keep the spacers in there and you don't have to worry about using a wrong spacer and it gets sucked down into there and then you got problems. I tried a couple of different pair of snack, snap ring pliers and I couldn't get that on there so I had to just roll it on there with a screwdriver but anyway that snap ring has got to be on there. Uh, Alright well I guess we can set that back on there and we can put this um, upper ball joint in. Okay guys, I would uh, consult your own torque specs. This is a 1995 Nissan D21 truck here and what I found on the internet, I'm not saying it's correct, you can check it out for yourself, but this was torque, said to torque it to 74, which I had to move it a little bit to get the cotter key in there, and then this one is supposed to be uh, 37. So uh, I had to remove this little bracket that was here that the tie rod uh, bolts to. And this new, the old nut was 22 millimeters. The new one is 27, which I just happen to have this right here. And I uh, have a proper torque wrench here. So, uh, and to get this thing up, I had to jack it up so it would meet the control arm. And those are the old bolts. I'm going to take those out and put the new ones in there and put some of that blue thread locker on there so they don't come out or they don't come out easily. And I need to put the grease fitting in there. And I was a little messy with the uh, thread locker here uh, on that. You can see I've got it on that bolt. I'm taking these out one at a time because I can't tell you how difficult it was to try and push that thing up there and C-clamp that down and try and get this started here. So I want that to pop loose again. All right, well, we will use a little judicious blue wrench here on this side too. 
you don't want to heat it up too much and like I said weaken the metal. Let's get a little bit of heat. Right, let's try that. Alright guys, this is no joke. That little thing right there and that little hammer in six hits that popped that loose with that heat. Alright, let's get the top one out. Well, that uh, upper ball, ball joint came out almost as easy as the lower one did with, uh, with that heat. Alright, that's that little snap ring on this side right here. And we just, just pried it up. And there we go. Now, we can press that off. All right, I don't know if you noticed this on the last one, but I had to, this is a piece of like 3 16 and the uh, caps that come with the little kit right here make this too long. This barely fits on there, right there. And what I had to do was it kept wanting to walk off, and you just kind of just, just tap it to the center with the hammer, like that, and then once it tightens up, it'll stay on there. So I just wanted to give you that little tip. Well, that one came out a lot easier than the other one. All right. Well, looks like I got my hopes up a little premature. That didn't take the um, little part out right there. All it did was break that bolt out of there. So let's um, let's get that out. All right, I got this one set up a little bit differently, as you can see right there, and we're going to try and pop that out. out all right a little brake clean or carburetor cleaner in there and get that hole cleaned out all right there again I needed this little flat piece of metal right here or it would not have gone very well and when you feel this thing get a lot of resistance that's when it's stopped and you know you're there all right there again we're playing around with this little snap ring right here and there we go now I thought I'd try this one by putting this in first and we don't want to forget to put that little boot on right there that would be bad if you forgot it. So let's try sticking that thing on there. Alright, I neglected to do this on the first set, so now that we have a little more experience, we're going to turn this so that cotter key is a little easier to get to. Ah, well, I guess that one ain't moving. But this one will move. Alright, it was much easier to put this in and then jack that up and then what I did is I just hit that down there and then that gave me enough room I could get the bolt on. So that's what I recommend. So alright, well let's get that torqued and put all that other stuff in there and that part is done. Alright, some uh, some people say you should count the threads, okay? you can see that the thread count is different right there but what I'm looking at is that this this needs to line up with that and I've got my tailgate here and I've got a reference point it's pretty close you can see that the center link is lined up the same but what is different is the threads on these new pieces right here are different than the threads on the old pieces and these are about the same size 
So if you were to take these off and put those on there and count the threads out, your alignment would be way off. So anyway, I've got it pretty close, guys. I'm going to have to take it in for an alignment. But I just wanted to uh, point that out, that you can't 100% go by the thread length. All right, uh, I made a note of where the steering wheel or that little knuckle is where it was pointed and it was pointed about right there and then I centered up the steering wheel put the lock on so when I put those uh, center link and tie rods in I'll be pretty close to center so let's uh, let's see if we can slip that on there all right I laid that stick up there and you can see that is really crooked before I tighten that tie rod in down right there I'm going to try and bring that in just a little bit so it's a little straighter and I don't know if y'all can see that little wood that I've laid up here you can see it kind of looks like it's turned that way in a little bit so I need to move that outer tie rod that way so that's too far in on that side all right I always recommend you take it to a uh, certified shop and have it properly aligned but you can see right here I've got this um, this scrap piece of aluminum and I've got it all lined up and you can see if you can see that there's just a hair of a toe in and for a rear rear wheel drive car that's what I'm wanting so that's touching the tire there and it's just a hair so the tire is the, the tires turn just a hair in that way and I've just got it sitting on those jack stands over there so anyway this is how I'm gonna get it pretty close if not if not perfect Alright guys, you can see right there how that thing is kicked out and it's even kicked out in the back. So let me let me straighten that out a little bit. If you can see in here or not, but I'm gonna turn this in and it'll turn with my hand. Turn that in a few times. All right, the steering wheel is relatively straight. I've got a little bit of toe in right there, if you can see that. And if you measure it, I've got a little bit of toe in right there. So we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna tighten those uh, little camber things up and we're gonna go for a drive. Got, just did the road test and She's driving like a dream. Maybe I'll get another 27 years out of her. All right, GearHead 327.